Welcome to McDougal. Did you know that the most important foundation for your life happened in your mother's arms? Hello, I'm Wayne Judd. And now your gastronomical guru, Dr. John. How are you? Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Is, uh, is that gastronomical like in terms of gas? Yes. I know a lot about gas. As a matter of fact, uh, the only criticism... You've had experience, I assume. The only criticism you could launch against a healthy diet, a starch-based diet with vegetables, fruits, and beans, is gas. Yes, I can vouch for that. So I think it needs to be addressed, even though it is a very sensitive issue. Okay, Please. On this kind of diet, you do have more gas, no question about it. And for a very simple reason, there are, <clears throat> there are carbohydrates that are not easily digested. And as a result, what happens is they move from the small intestine into the large intestine. And in the large intestine, bacteria turn them into gases. And this is troublesome for a lot of people. And what we have to do is we have to deal with it, know what to do about it, recognize it. And uh, there are things you can do. Now, is that bacteria supposed to be in there? Yeah, it's just normal ball bacteria. We've all got that. And but what you have is uh, particular certain foods that are particularly notorious for causing gas. And you know what those are. Yes, beans, lentils, those are the ones I like. Beans, <laughs> peas, and lentils. And whether they're hot dogs and beans or ham and beans doesn't make any difference. They still cause gas because they have two sugars right. that are poorly digested. Right. Cheese, doesn't cheese do that? Mm. Well, we don't eat cheese anymore. Yes, che well, no, cheese doesn't do as bad as milk products in general. Because here, again, they have a sugar that's not digested well, and that sugar is called lactose. Cheese is low in lactose, but yogurt or skim milk or regular, uh, regular dairy products, milk, ice cream, and so on, has a lot of lactose. And so many, many, many people, particularly non-Caucasian, non-white people, get lots of gas from dairy products. But well, I won't ask you why it discriminates, but well, sounds a little it, discriminatory. Well, it probably has to do with exposure. In other words, the white population has been exposed to dairy products through, you know, centuries. Oh, and as okay. a result, whereas Very the Hispanics, blacks, uh, Asians have not had that exposure and so as a result they have not adapted to the dairy and the adaption would be keeping an enzyme that's designed for digesting milk called lactase which everybody has when they're a little baby. Lactase yes. digests lactose and of course you're supposed to be digesting the milk of mother's milk. Yes. But as far as this gas issue which I know you want to solve. Let's get a solution. First of all, first pills, of all, there's, right? More there's, pills. there's adjustment that takes place and that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. If you just if you just get a little give it a little time when you change your diet, what happens is your bowel bacteria change and as a consequence you're able to digest more of those carbohydrates and of course you make much less gas. So don't give up if it's a little, little time. tough at the first. The second thing Good. you can do, and nobody's going to discuss this with you, this is a very sensitive subject. Here. All right. Uh, the second thing you can do is you can give up the beans, peas, and lentils. You don't need them for any reason. I mean, they are high in protein, but you get plenty of protein from rice, potatoes, corn, fruits and vegetables, so you don't have to have the beans, peas, and lentils. And so if you're if, you're, if you don't tolerate them, then just leave them out. And you're still going to have a good diet? Oh, a very healthy diet. You get all the protein you need in rice. You don't have to worry about it. The next thing that you can do is, is, is you, can, uh, you can cook these beans, peas, and lentils and all your other vegetable foods very thoroughly because what you do then is you end up breaking down these sugars so they're much more easily digested but by thorough cooking. Don't you ruin something good in the... No, not necessarily. No, you still have plenty of nutrients. Nature was so kind, she just loaded your foods with nutrients, so even thorough cooking is not a, it's not a big issue as long as you plan your diet around uh, vegetable foods. So I don't have to, I don't have to worry <clears throat> that I'm losing something if my food isn't raw. Well, nothing that is going to make a difference as far as your health is concerned. Oh, that's you great. Can, you, can make, you can make arguments for it, but none of them really hold up when it comes to, to the, the bottom line, which is just enjoying good health. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever heard of people who say that what you do for gas is you soak the beans and then throw the water out? Yes. Okay. I've heard what that. What soaking does, what soaking does is it, it starts the cooking process. In other words, it starts the breaking down process. And so after you've soaked, you need to cook less. And so soaking just starts the digestion of those carbohydrates. I see. Yeah. Now, there's a product on the market that you can buy that helps with gas. You go into the, into the drug store, the food store, you know, grocery store, and it's called Beano. Yes. You've heard of Beano. Okay, I know It comes about in Bino. liquid and it also comes in little tablets. And you have to start your meal with, with these substances. You eat with your first bite. What they do is they supply the enzymes that will break down those sugars that your intestinal tract can't break down. But I can tell you that you might use that if you're early on in a diet change and it may not work as much well, as you, you know, think it should. It is, it is certainly, uh, the, the, re, the response to Beano certainly varies with people. Yes. And the, uh, the second thing, the next thing you can do is you can use activated charcoal. That sometimes helps. But what I want to point out to you, 
What I want to point out to you, Wayne, is that gas is natural and normal. This is really not uh, something abnormal. You mean even beautiful people have gas? Beautiful. Do you ever ride a horse? I never thought of beautiful people Did as Did you ever ride gas. a horse? Yes, I've ridden a horse. Okay, then you know gas is natural. And then one advantage of this, of one advantage of this kind of gas, Wayne, is that I lost it, you it on is, that. I, I'm, I'm hearing. Well, the audience didn't. You lose mean me. the ho the horse is very gassy. The horses do that. Yes, yes okay. But I just wanted to the make sure. The advantage of this time of gas is it's a lot less malodorous. So oh. you think about oh, that. You think about nice. that for a while while we're getting ready for so our next. So you can be impolite and no one will know. <clears throat> I see. Our yeah. next thing. It's an advantage to eat a healthy diet. We're going to talk about eating a healthy diet all the way from birth. We're going to talk about breastfeeding in our next segment, an extremely important subject. Sounds great. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Lions roar is to warn threatening bachelor males from other prides to stay away from their young. Here, a lion cub gets a lesson in proper roaring from its father. Teaching this behavior is not just crucial to the pride, but also to the survival of the species. Just a reminder how important it is for fathers to spend time with their children. Mama. I played with Natalie today. You did? She's a girl at my school. She has pretty hair, and I like her long hair. Mm -hmm. We play together, we talk together, and we were eating outside, and um, bugs got on it. Ooh. Nah. Ooh. They're just fly around and get on people's food. Then we killed all the bugs, and then it was gone before we knowed it. <laughs> Every sunburn during childhood significantly increases your risk of skin cancer. Protect your children. Protect yourself. <laughs> You can see me now because you have your sight. It's a precious thing, sight. But if you're over 60 or black and over 40, there is something that could take it away, glaucoma, unless you discover it early through a dilated eye exam. If you're at risk, get a dilated eye exam at least every two years. Don't give glaucoma a chance. Welcome back to the show. This is a subject that I'm, I, I hate to use the word passionate about, but I am passionate about it, and that is uh, feeding of the young children, breastfeeding specifically. With us is Hope Colt Maddie. She is a leader in the Lelechi League, and uh, just knowing where you come from, I have to realize you support it. Very much so. You have, are you a mother also? Yes, I have two children, and uh, they're, they're 12 years old and nine years old and no longer nursing, but... But they were nursing. <laughs> they did at one okay, time, right. yes. Now, now, a lot of mothers are offended by this subject. They don't like the militant uh, uh, aggressiveness that the Lechi mother, uh, mm -hmm. well, leaders have and, and counselors have. But I want to tell you, I don't care. I think it's absolutely essential that you do the work you do, and if you hurt their feelings, tough. They've <laughs> got to learn this very important subject, and you tell us why it's important to breastfeed. Well, I can give you the top five reasons why I think it's important to breastfeed. Um, first of all, breast milk is tailor-made to each individual baby's needs. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, so let's stop with that for okay. a minute. Oh, that, yes. means, that means when they're premature, the breast milk That's is right. different. Yes. And when they're one month old, it's different than when they're six months old. And exactly. so it adjusts to the yes. needs of the baby. And mm -hmm. also, and uh, I hate to put words in your mouth, but it also changes with uh, the ambient temperature of the room and how mm -hmm. much water the baby That's needs. Right. It takes care of it, it changes from day to night. Mothers in the morning have richer milk because mm -hmm. they've had a good night's sleep, hopefully. And towards dinner time, it waters down. This gives the baby cues on mm -hmm. when to wake up and when to go to sleep. So it varies. It, uh, and if the baby the sweats a lot and loses, needs more water as opposed to milk, it 
makes that variation too? That's right. Smart. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, Number two. Okay, it's cheap. It's, it's <laughs> Dads like that one. Yeah. And um, if you breastfeed a baby for six months with no supplements, you can expect to save approximately the cost of a major household appliance, wow. which can be like a thousand dollars or more. You're, you're really hitting and, below the belt when you talk about the money aspect. And that's just with the formula mm -hmm. costs. Okay. If, uh, you know, if you breastfeed, then babies have less illness and less okay. need to see the pediatrician. But that's cheap, that's two. Let's go on to three. Okay. Is it three illness? Um, three would be sleep, because that's really important thing mm -hmm. to most moms and um, in particular, I hear from women who are working mm -hmm. outside of the home and breastfeed that they get more sleep if they breastfeed because um, they, if the baby's sleeping in their room, they don't have to get up and go out and mm -hmm. fix a bottle and the baby wakes up completely. So you don't have to take you know? the time preparing the bottle either. Right. Okay. Yes. And so everybody um, rests better. That's right. Everybody. And you know Dad, one of the things everybody. that really bugs me is when I'm on an airplane or I'm in uh, some building and, and I have this crying infant there and I just know that if this was a breastfed infant that the mother would be able to, to establish a relationship that would keep the child comforted and quieted and yeah. uh, I feel like going up and shaking her but I know it wouldn't do any good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, finally, health in general, ba breastfed babies have uh, fewer illnesses and well, things be, like that. Can you be a little more specific about that? Uh, How well, much fewer? I tell you that the one of the major ones is that they, they have fewer allergies. They have fewer know, allergies. Which you were talking about. It's been about associated with asthma, before. obesity, right. mm -hmm. uh, and, and yes, multiple sclerosis, even though that's, that's very right. controversial. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you a figure that I love, mm -hmm. is bottle-fed bottle babies have three times the risk of hospitalization and major illness during the first year of life. You ever heard that? Yes, I have. And now that, that would shock any mother, wouldn't it? I mean, would. You know, you got this new baby in the home, you're worried every time they cry, and somebody presents you with a fact that the baby has three times the chance of going to the hospital or being very ill if you bottle feed the kid. That's right. Hope, can, can every mother breastfeed? And what if they um, can't? Yeah, I mean, are we making people feel guilty by making such a big case a for really, that? So. That's a really good... Well, John, <laughs> I tell you, I, 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 if, I, if, I, if they would allow me, I would be a member of the League. This is a cause <laughs> for you, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, it, that's a good question because it's a question that we get asked frequently. Um, Yes, every woman can breastfeed. Every healthy woman can breastfeed. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look in third world countries where women are emaciated and, and you know malnourished, they still breastfeed. They can still, and they have a chubby little breastfeeding baby on their lap. Um, the there are women who have problems nursing. Sometimes, if, uh, sometimes if a woman has had uh, breast uh, surgery or something like that, or certain forms of illness, cancer, there might be some challenges. But I've known women who've breastfed through th through. You know, they've been told by everybody they Isn't wouldn't be able to. Isn't it true that you can even breastfeed if you've never had a baby? That's exactly true. Many adoptive mothers have chosen Besides to try and to nurse and have been okay. successful. Are we at three or four yet? Um, <laughs> I think we're, we're still at four. One thing I did want to mention along with health is that uh, jaw and facial development is, is so oh. much more enhanced mm -hmm. by breastfeeding that speech, earlier speech and better speech is enhanced. Is that right? They, mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, babies use totally different um, facial movements and jaw and jaw muscles in order to breastfeed rather than, when than they bottle have a feeding. Bottle. Yeah. They don't basically use very few when they're mm -hmm. bottle feeding. They, and breastfeeding babies also develop these chubby breastfeeding cheeks, so they're cuter too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great and, argument. Uh, number five. Um, probably the, the most important reason for me, even if all the health reasons were not there, it's the closeness. And it's beginning a lifelong communication with your baby of I'm going to help you with your needs. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to respond to you. I'm going to hold you close to me. Mm. And my children are now 9 and 12, and I feel that that was the foundation of my relationship okay. with them. But, you know, a lot of people argue about that. A lot of people say that it's just, it's just as nice a relationship to have mm -hmm. this bottle as opposed to the breast. And what I say to those people is you try curling up at night with a rubber nipple and a glass bottle, and you see how much more fun it is. <laughs> yeah, and, it's and a big difference, isn't it? Yes. Bre breastfeeding pump. is a tool you can use. You can choose mm -hmm. to use or you can choose not to use. It's something that helps make mothering, parenting easier. Yes. And we're going to talk about why it gets sabotaged, because it's not the woman's fault. It's money. 
testify. I thought you were going to say men. <laughs> no, we're going to talk share. about the problem. We're going to also talk about some of the other problems associated with bottle feeding as opposed to breastfeeding. And we'll be back in a moment. A log cabin on the lake. Just me and my wife and fishing. I can tell you what I won't do. I won't just curl up and vegetate. Do something I've wanted to do since college. Go back to college. Eating un crucero. Alaska. Secure your retirement plans with U.S. savings bonds. When you think of retirement, you think no more boss, no more responsibilities. But it also means no more paycheck. So where would the money come from? I have a pension plan where I work. But will I still be working there 20 years from now? Start saving for retirement now with U.S. savings bonds. They're the easy way to save. They're the safe way to invest in your future. Get details where you work or bank. Or write U.S. Savings Bonds, Department of the Treasury, Washington, D.C., 20226. Look, you work too hard not to reward yourself when you retire. Take stock in America. U.S. Savings Bonds. My Youth for Understanding experience was the best thing I've ever done in my entire life. If you want to learn a language, this is how you do it. You have to live here and you have to breathe in the country. You meet in a whole new family that are willing to accept you and take you in. I feel like, just like I'm a part of the family. Being involved with the family, living right at home, that has been my best learning experience so far. You only live once, so you do it, try it, live it. It was great. It was incredible. Go Global. Welcome back. We have Hope Colt Meddy with us. She's the, a leader from the Lechi League. We're talking about a subject you can tell I care a lot about. I'll tell you one of the things is I was, I was breastfed for three weeks. And what really hurt my feelings was uh, when I read an article a couple of years ago in The Lancet that said that my IQ was off by nine points because I wasn't breastfed longer. You know, I could have been up there with Donahue or Oprah if I'd have been <laughs> breastfed a, few, a, few, a little bit longer. Also, last year there was an article that showed uh, children who were bottle fed had twice the chance of having uh, uh, brain damage, brain problems. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you also have problems of colic. Now, I'm going to hit people with one that always gets emotional reactions. And I'm sorry if you don't like it. But the data shows that if you bottle feed a child, the risk of crib death, SIDS, yes. is increased two to four times over mm -hmm. a breastfed baby. Yes. Now, it doesn't mean all cases of SIDS are caused by bottle feeding. Right. It just, what a simple, uh, simple help to reduce this, this problem. Part of the reason they believe that that is is because um, because a baby sucks differently mm. at the breast, breastfeeding helps regulate breathing and causes the baby to want to intake air and exhale. Also, they're close to the mother a lot, mm -hmm. so they hear the mother breathing. And also the position, but I think one of the more interesting mm -hmm. explanations is the cow's milk is inhaled. Mm -hmm. It goes into the stomach, right. it is regurgitated and inhaled by the child and causes an immunologic reaction, an anaphylactic mm -hmm. reaction, which kills the child which is one of the more interesting theories. But regardless, the data is there, and study after study after study, bottle-fed bottle babies have an increased risk. If mm -hmm. mothers knew this, but they don't stand a chance, what happens when you have a baby in the hospital? Well, uh, that can be a difficult situation. What happens is many times there's a lot of separation, and in order for breastfeeding to get off to the best start, you need to have a lot of togetherness between mm -hmm. the mom and the baby. And sometimes if a baby develops jaundice, which is normal physiological jaundice, many times physicians feel that babies need to have a break from the breast, and it's not like, you know, putting a bottle so back and a forth. It's hard to get the baby with back. the doctors. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to say the nurses, even though most yes. of them are women, mm -hmm. there's a problem there. But what do you get as a special prize when you go home? You get a nice bag full of formula. <laughs> oh, yes, you get a bag full of formula. So you can do the modern thing. You can bottle feed your baby, right. provided by the drug company. Mm -hmm. When you tell them that you're not going mm -hmm. to bottle feed, they will not give you the formula. Well, that's kind of them. What is, the, what is the father's role in breastfeeding? Does dad just sort of watch, or can dad oh, help in this process? Oh, dad's extremely important. <laughs> He's, um, 
you know, sometimes babies don't just need to breastfeed. They, you know, mom has tried the breast, the diaper, the everything, but dad can walk the baby around. Dad, uh, dad helps in many ways. Dad supports the mom, and that's very and important. And dad is much happier because the baby is quieter and happier. Mm -hmm. Colic, colic, which is a problem of babies, has, has been shown to be reduced dramatically in, uh, in breastfed babies. That's and right. an important thing is that breastfed babies need to be fed with clean breast milk. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things they found is what the mother eats, and particularly the mother consuming dairy products, mm -hmm. cow's milk, right. will induce colic mm -hmm. in breastfed mm -hmm. babies. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, a baby is never allergic to breast milk because mm -hmm. that would be, you know, illogical in nature. Yeah. But yeah. Um, you can't, a baby can be allergic to things that the mother intakes, and, and cow's milk is the number one. Now, there's an 800 number for Lelechi, so I'd like you to get your pencils ready because the people at Lelechi will come out and help. I mean, your interest is in purely one of making this natural process take place. And uh, lots of women have lots of problems and very little support in our society, and I just can't tell you how much I applaud you. Thank you. The 800 number is 1-800-LECHE. That's L-A-L-E-C-H-E, or let me give you the numbers. It's 1-800-525-3243, 525-3243. If you know anybody who's having problems, you know, a friend, a relative, or, or if you're a nurse and you happen to be working in a and uh, in the delivery room, you know, what an opportunity to pass this information out so the late you people can come by. Thank you very much for having this show and for informing the public about this important issue. Oh, well, they need to know. We need to have more and more shows about this. You've got to get off to a good start in life, don't you think? Yeah. Absolutely. Can they reach you through that 800 number also? Yes, they, they can get in contact with a Lalechi League leader in their area. Now, I want to introduce you to the mother of my three breastfed children. Mary McDougal, and she's going to do, show us how to do a little bit of cooking for children. How's that? Great. All right. Join us after this commercial break. We'll be right back. You know, my health is no laughing matter. A vegetarian diet helps me stay healthy and fit, not just for myself, but for the ones I love. A hearty vegetable soup, pasta primavera, or my mom's red beans and rice. Delicious and good for you, and that's no joke. So tonight, make it vegetarian. Do it for someone you love. For more information, write to Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, or visit their website at www.pcrm.org. Think you can hide your handgun from your kid? Okay, we're coming in. Please think again. In nature, we see reflections of our children. The tree is the strong one, the ocean rambunctious and untamed. Like our children, each brings something wonderful and unique. They add color, they bring life. And to choose the sky over the water would be like choosing one child over the next. EarthShare, the world's leading environmental groups working together. To learn how you and your employer can help, visit our website. Did you know that one out of every four children goes through a stage during which they may stutter? If someone you know has a stuttering problem, the Stuttering Foundation of America is ready to help. For free informative brochures and a nationwide resource list, Call the nonprofit Stuttering Foundation of America at 1 800 992 9392. That's 1 800 992 9392. Welcome back. I'd like to introduce you to Mary McDougall. That's right, Mary's my wife, and uh, we've been together 23 years. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's 23 years of my life. Uh, Wayne, uh, were you breastfed? I was breastfed. Breastfed. <laughs> That's why I don't talk too good. I was too busy. No, I, I probably was breastfed. I would say probably, I was thinking something like six years. We were very poor. And but it certainly helped my intelligence, I can John. Tell you, I, that's why you're smarter than I am. There we go. No question about that. <laughs> Mary, you, you brought with us some uh, 
snacks and quick foods that you can feed to kids. Yes. All right, let's, uh, why don't we start over on this side? Well, people are always worried about what kind of healthy things they can have in the house for children, and it's really important that you have good things in the house. There are pretzels. Can I munch, You Mary? may try a pretzel. And well, let's start way, the way over there at the fruits. There. The fruits are good. You didn't bring those, though, but that's really what we have those in the center. We have those in the, on the center of our counter, yes. There's some fat-free crunchums. There's fat-free potato chips. You may try all of those. These look like this. They're little, little capsules. <laughs> <laughs> go nice with pretzels. They go nice with, now okay. try a potato chip. Oh, potato chip. They're very good potato chips. And these are fat-free? Fat-free, right. How yeah. much salt? Not too much salt? Not too much salt. And, it, and, and the, you know, the model oh, that you, you can't wonderful. just eat just one, it doesn't matter. With those, you can eat as much <laughs> as you, you can want. as many as you want. This, yes. is, this is very potato-y. It's the potato yes. potato I've ever, potato chip I've ever eaten. <laughs> Congratulations. Then there are cereal bars. They can just pop into the toaster, or you can eat them just like they are, right out of the box. There are juice that you put in the freezer and they're oh, like little popsicles cool for the kids, fruits. but they're made out of mm -hmm. pure juice. And then there are all of these fat-free, meat-free treats. These well, are my kids' favorites. Like yeah. this oh, one is oh, happy like to these? Canadian yes. veggie bacon. Favorite. There's a, um, yep. a veggie pepperoni. Mm -hmm. That's, well, a, that's a good one, yes, the pepperoni is really good. <laughs> and how about the, the no fat, no meat hot dogs? These right. are wild well, dogs. Some of them I tolerate better than others. Well, you know. don't just feed them to the kids. <laughs> no, I, I feed them to you too. Mary, do your kids eat this stuff or did they? Yes, this, this burger right here, my 12-year-old son used to take this to school in his lunch every day, put it in the microwave, and uh, he'd have that for lunch. Good. So there are all kinds of things that are available for children. This is another one of my son's favorite fast lunches. This is chicken-free noodles that you just put hot water in, and in five minutes they're ready to eat. And how do you make the smoothie? The smoothie is one of the easiest things to do, and everybody likes smoothies. You take a banana, <coughs> some frozen strawberries, a little water or fruit juice, put it in a blender, and you have an absolutely delicious drink. Kind of help wash down the yes. pretzels. Oh, you may try you. that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Lot, lots of good things. They never have to go hungry. They have these things around the house, and there's always Delicious. something available. Mm. And if I suppose if you, if you have them leave the house stuffed, <laughs> then they have it's less easier, chance to yes. go yes. don't they? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, Hope, I want to thank you very much for thank being with you. us. You're an inspiration for women out there who would really like to have the chance to breastfeed. And Mary, I want to thank you very much for taking us into the next stage of life. That's right. <laughs> yes, and, and help us with the kids. And I want to thank you very much for listening. Goodbye, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.